In this video we're going to take a look at split lighting and how we can create dramatic DAS 3D renders. Hey there, Rocco here. I hope you're doing well. Uh, if this is your first visit to my channel, then welcome. If you've been around before, then welcome back. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be starting off a new series on lighting. Uh, obviously, it's one of the key areas that we need to get to grips with if we want to produce high quality renders. Uh, but it's something that we all tend to struggle with at times. I mean, I do at times. Uh, sometimes I rely on luck. But it's something we all tend to struggle with at times. So I'm going to go right back to the basics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, going through just single light setups that we can use. For two reasons. One, uh, just to say that we don't really need to do anything too complicated. And secondly, uh, just so that we can start to get a grasp of how light and shadow interacts and how we can be using them to create good good images. Uh, now, because this is an ongoing series, uh, and there's going to be quite a few videos coming out about this over the next week or so, probably, you're probably going to want to hit subscribe down below uh, and the little notification bell so that you don't miss any of them when they drop. Now, as you can see, we've already got a model in place. Her name is Luned. I think that's how it's, how it's pronounced. Uh, sorry if I butchered that. And she was created by iSource Textures. Uh, she's wearing a little black dress, and as usual, we've stuck some hair on the top of her head. And again, as usual, you can find the links in the description to all of these assets. Now, I am using a HDRI map just to provide a, a really low level ambient light so that we're not working in the dark, as you can see on screen there. But it's not really going to affect the, the final results. All that we're really going to be lighting the scene up with is our one light that we're setting up. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to rotate around our character as she stood here. Um, we're going to create a spotlight from this position. Uh, so we'll just come up to the menu bar at the top and we'll just hit spotlight. And we want to apply the active viewport transform, which is obviously the perspective view. So it'll create the camera in this position. Uh, sorry, the spotlight in that position. Uh, now, if I just change my camera to the spotlight so we can just see where we are a little bit, I kind of want it hitting the center torso area about there. That should do the job. Uh, and if I come back now to the perspective camera and just come around, uh, it's a little bit far out at the moment, so we'll just select the light. Oops. And then with our gadget, just bring it in a little bit. It's not really much. And I'll rotate it up also so that it's more or less pointing straight at ahead, as you can see. Uh, that should be fine for what we're doing. Now, as you can see, that light, if we just go from the top view looking down it's directly at 90 degrees to where she stood i'll just bring it in a little bit closer in truth just a little bit oh, can't get the widgets so it's it's directly 90 degrees as to where she sta uh, stood uh, and if we come back to perspective view you can kind of see that it's just going past the end point of, of where she is so there we have everything set up and there's just one more thing we have to do Again, with our spotlight set, uh, selected, I just want to come down to the, the lumen or the luminous flux, and I'm going to give it quite a high value of 350,000, uh, so that it'll be nice and bright for us. Now, if we were to take a look at a rendered image of how it looks at the moment, you can see that there's some very hard shadows there the lights way too seemingly way too bright and that the shadows are really hard and the reason for that is because the the spotlight is set up by default as a point so all the light is emanating from a central point in that uh in that spotlight so it's very narrow and it's very intense as a result of it and that's why you get this bright light and the the hard shadows so what we want to do is we want to with the spotlight selected we want to come down to light and then we want to come down to where it says light geometry. And what I'm going to do on the drop down menu, I'm going to turn that into a rectangle. Now, what we're saying by that is that we're creating now instead of a point of light, we're going to have a rectangle. You know, if you've ever looked at a photo studio and you'll see that they actually use light boxes. I don't know if you've seen them. It's a very similar thing. Now, even though nothing, you know, on our spotlight up here changes, we're actually now telling Daz to, to turn it into a rectangular shape. And if we look down below, of a height of 10 and a width of 10. Now, I think that, you know, the units there are centimetres, but... Uh, 
it's it's we create this rectangle and we're saying to Daz it's going to be a width of 10 and a, and a height of 10. Now we I actually want it to be bigger because the bigger you make this rectangle the softer the shadows are actually going to be when we, we do a render with it. So what I'm going to do I'm going to make it quite large actually. I'm going to actually go up to 200 by 200. Now that is quite large and it, if it is centimeters that means it's a six foot by six foot light box that I'm creating. Uh, but you know we'll get the desired results that, that I actually want to get. And so now when we take a look at the final rendered image you can see how all the shadows have softened around the face. We've got a nice little bit on the nose there where you start to see the subspace scattering coming through and the translucency of the skin and it's created quite a nice dramatic effect that we can that we can incorporate into our own renders in the future. Now it's maybe not something that you will always use you know it's, it's only in certain circumstances that you would use a split light like this but it creates a, a pretty good image and anyway you know, if we were to uh, step out a little bit and look at different distances that we've got you can see that you've got the nice the nice you know blend between or the, or the nice contrast between the light and the shadow if you look over on on this side of uh our screen where she's you're getting the full body view maybe it doesn't work so well with a, a full body view although you can probably make it work if uh you know with a bit of post or something or if you made it black and white or if you you didn't have a background set like what i'm using but certainly for port rates uh you can actually create a pretty decent view uh and like I say, this is just one light. You don't need to go anything crazy or anything crazily set up in your scene. Just one light and you can create a pretty decent effect. And so there we go. A simple split light setup that we can use to create a, you know, a dramatic lighting effect on our on our subjects and in our renders. Maybe it's not something that you'll use all of the time. Uh, but you can use it by itself like this. Or you know maybe incorporate some of the ideas into more complex scenes. Uh, it does work okay in dark scenes. If you've got somebody you know, in a, a nighttime scene or something. It can look pretty good. Uh, but yeah, maybe not something you'll use all the time, but it's something, you know, just to just to be able to see that, you know, that playing with the light and the shadow to create these effects. Uh, but there we go, split lighting. Uh, if you've got something out of this video and you, you think you'll find it useful, then please, you know, if you could like and share down below, it will really, really help me out. And likewise, because this is part of an ongoing series on lighting, you're probably going to want to hit the subscribe and the little notification bell down below if you haven't already, uh, so that you don't miss any of the other uh, videos in this series when they drop. And finally, if you've got any questions or any comments on this video, maybe, you know, about the lighting or, or ways you can play around with it, or, you know, if you've, even if you've just got any questions on Daz in general, then drop them down below in the comment section and I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So for now, that's it. Split lighting. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.